As training camp approaches, we'll be reviewing several players' performances in the 2023 season and discussing how they could impact the Eagles during the 2024 season. Today, we'll be discussing Nicobe Dean. Nicobe Dean is coming off a rough second year in the NFL as he had two separate foot injuries, which caused him to play in only five games. And after not playing much his rookie season and not exactly overwhelming in his limited time in year two, Dean heads into year three with a lot of question marks. The overall sentiment on Dean appears to be low, but there are some positives to his game to take away. I thought he showed some good things, particularly in the run game. He generally had good awareness on run plays, and he's physical and aggressive coming downhill. And I think he's a better athlete moving downhill than he is backwards. And he really fits into gaps pretty quickly. Uh, and he has good short area quickness as well. And he does a really good job playing off of his interior defensive linemen. And because of that, you didn't really see him take on a ton of offensive linemen at the point of attack uh, when he was playing. He kind of knifed into the backfield or, or filled his gap without having to really stack and shed a lot of guys, which I think is a good thing because he is, just due to his undersized nature, I don't really, you know, I don't think he's ever going to be a guy that's really disengaging all that well. But he is pretty crafty when it comes to setting up an offensive lineman so that he can either dip around them or give himself a little bit of a better edge so that he can get around the block. Like I mentioned, he's undersized, but he is tough fighting through traffic, and he doesn't miss a ton of tackles. On top of that, if you look at his uh, his run stats, he was actually pretty efficient in his run snaps, although it was very limited snaps uh, over his second year, so take it with a grain of salt. He didn't qualify the, for the top 100 linebackers in terms of run defense snaps last year, but if he did, he would have rated 24th in tackle rate. So he was getting to the ball a good amount, um, and his stuff rate was 6th out of 100. So not only was he getting to the ball, he was making tackles that created a lot of negative plays for the offense. Um, and he didn't register, according to PFF, didn't register a missed tackle in a run play um, the entire year. Again, he only played five games, and I think he left early in two of those. So it's a small sample size. On top of that, he's a good blitzer, uh, especially in college. That was one of the things he was best at. Like he is in run the run game, he is vicious coming downhill. He'll absolutely run over a running back. And so you got to bring uh, your big boy pants if you're going to try and block Dean. And again, like we mentioned in our Devin White video, Fangio blitzes his linebackers at a fairly high rate. They were 11th highest in the NFL last season. Um, so being able to blitz is definitely a requirement in a Fangio defense. Uh, as far as his negatives go, I think his range is just okay. Like I mentioned, I think he's better coming downhill than he is working backwards. And I think he has better short area quickness than he does long speed. So he's good working inside on run plays. But if he has to go sideline to sideline or, or chase passes down to the perimeter, I don't think that's exactly where he excels at. His eye discipline can also be lacking, especially on run plays and especially when there's motion. He kind of gets, motion will definitely throw him off, but coverage is likely to be his biggest issue. Like I mentioned, I think he's better going forwards than backwards. I don't think he has the best change of direction skills. He's often very high in his drop where he's got a high pad level and he's on his heel, so it makes it tough for him to break forward on passes. And again, I don't think he's the best closing space. I think Devin White is a much better player closing space on throws underneath and i don't think he's a guy that you want to get matched up on running backs one-on-one -on -one, especially if it's uh, a jameer gibbs alvin Kamara type player that's not where he's gonna gonna play well and overall i think his iq in the past game is just okay um so i think there are some positives with dean but there are some negatives with his game some limitations to his game um but eric what are your thoughts yeah. Coming out of the draft, I remember people go, what a steal. What a steal. Dean well, was in the third round, right? And I was like, is there even a such thing as a steal in the NFL? I mean, all of these teams had the opportunity to draft him a couple of times and they didn't. The medicals were bad. Um, and that came to fruition, obviously, in the first two years. So, like you said, there's a very small sample size. So, to me, there, it's a lot of unknowns. It's like, yeah, I, know, I saw what he did in college, but there's so few reps in the NFL, it's hard to even assess what his ability level is. I agree. In terms of the run defense, I agree with you that, you know, he's his positioning is good. Um, the one thing is, if 
offensive linemen do get their hands on him, to me, I think he gets washed out of the play. It, it was so, something that was very apparent if you watch the national championship game the year he came out, that some of those Alabama linemen would work up to the linebacker level and he would just be completely washed out of the play. Um, and, and some of that showed up last year. In coverage, I characterize him as a chicken with his head cut off. He didn't seem to know what he was doing. Uh, it, like it was almost like, was he trying to read the quarterback? Is he trying to cover a zone? Is he trying to see crossers coming? I mean, one of the things you mentioned previously was he would let people cross his face all the time um, and would be like slow to react. It really showed up. I mean, we I remember watching some of the Reddick snaps where he would drop in the coverage and even and Nolan Smith and it didn't look that dissimilar to when Dean was in pass coverage I mean and where this guy is an off-ball linebacker so that was scary to me you you trot this guy out in your base defense and he's gonna be responsible for covering like uh half of the intermediate part of the field I, I'm worried about that so you know, I think the IQ, I think his IQ is there, um, seems to have a good work ethic. Um, when healthy, his movement skills are solid. So the pieces are there for him to develop into a competent starter. But between the medicals, the pass coverage, instincts, his overall frame, there's a lot of concerns for me. Yeah. So in terms of, his coverage and like what you said, running around with like a chicken with his head cut off. He's, and you brought it up, he's played very few snaps. So it is hard to, you know, I did give like a four or five minute, you know, breakdown on, on him as a player and what he did last year. It was on relatively little snaps. So it's hard to come away with a full con conviction or a full take on him. And I think he's still a, a player that's growing. So I think you, you see some of that stuff and in his game he's much more natural as a run stopper i mean i think that's what he was best at coming out of college and you see that in the nfl in the early part of his career but he's got to grow and i think the biggest area for growth and where he needs to improve the most is in the past game or i think that could be something where it could really hold him back in terms of his development in the nfl so we'll see um going forward where he can be now i i think white and dean have a good balance in that Listen, neither one is a top tier player at their position, but I think they balance each other out a little bit in terms of I think White's a better in coverage than Dean is and Dean's better in the run game. Obviously, we'd like for both of them to get better at both of their weaknesses, but I think it does balance each other out and you can kind of mix and match and play certain coverages and kind of highlight people in certain positions um, just based on, on their strengths. So I think that helps out. Uh, back to your point about you know, he was injured coming out of college. I think the reason he fell wasn't so much the injury. First of all, what was his major injury that he had that caused him to fall that far? I really don't know what it was. And then you look at David Ajabo, who was a projected to be a first, late first or early second round edge rusher, uh, that same draft. He tore his Achilles in the pre-draft process, which is a real legit major injury. And he still got drafted in the mid-second round. So... Was it really he fell because of injury or what did the NFL just not view him as highly as draft Twitter did? I think in my mind, I think it was more of the latter. But we'll see with Dean going forward. I We just need to see him play this year before we can really have a full take on him. Yeah, it was the pec. He, he had a bad pec injury. You know, I might... Um... He, he didn't even... He never missed a game in college though. So it's like... I'm pretty sure he didn't miss a game in college. He didn't miss any time in the NFL. He never had major surgery. I don't really know. I think it was like pre-draft stuff, but what really happened to him that caused him to... I, I, it just seemed like a lot of smoke and mirrors in terms of the injury in my mind. Yeah, I think I was trying to put the puzzle pieces together where I'm like, okay... Some people are projecting this guy as like early second rounder, maybe even higher... 
and then he this bad medical report comes out and then he's dropping like a rock in the draft and so you're just like oh it's medicals that could have been a false assumption um personally i didn't i was not a fan of the pick regardless of medicals or not when i it's not like i intimately studied every game but i did watch all 22 of the national championship because i was like all right this this is the most pro analog play that you'll see out of him and i i didn't like how he played in that game obviously it's one game um but yeah like you said the sample size is small funny point about that is if you only looked at five games of nicholas morrow from last year you would think this guy's a pro bowler so you you the same logic could be applied to dean where it's like oh he had all these warts in his five games look good but it's like ultimately how much does that mean this is one of the tricks with the NFL in general is that even guys who played five years, it could still be a small sample. Maybe they played 60 games. A ma- that's not even one NBA season. So it there's the way someone's career turns out is much more subject to random chance, variance, volatility, all external factors in the NFL because of how few games there are um, as opposed to other sports. And that also makes assessing how they played and how they're likely to play in the future much more difficult. And I think that's kind of where Dean falls in. Yeah, and he played on a a Georgia team that really isn't all that dissimilar to the Eagles team and that like they had some dudes up front that could really allow him space to kind of fit into the run and not have to take on too many blocks. And so he was able to play well behind that team. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> exactly. And you see a lot of that same stuff. Um, you know, you see a lot of that same stuff on this defense. He didn't have to take on a ton of blocks. But, you know, if he's put in the position like he's put in now, I think he can excel. Is he going to become a top tier player at the position? No, probably not. Can he become a solid starter in the NFL if put in a position that allows him to play to his strengths? I think he can. Um, but you just got to realize he probably has a limited upside just due to his stature, his athletic ability, and, and everything with that. Now, before we leave, do you think he will be the starter this year? It seems just through early OTAs. I know he's working his way from back from injury, but it seems like this year, last year it seemed like they kind of handed him the job and said, you're going to be the starter. It seems like there might be a little more of a competition this year. Do you think he is a starter on day one? Yes. Yeah, a more familiarity just with the team. Now, maybe that's invalidated because it's all new coaching staff, new players in the linebacking room. But I do think it gives him the opportunity to keep his job. Um, I know some of the, some of the players have mentioned that they felt like none of the players were just given the starting title. Obviously, it's super early on, but they they use specifically the verbiage of I have to earn it. I think that we heard that from Tyler Steen, um, which is great. This is something we talked about earlier in the offseason, which is we think they're going to emphasize competition. Um, and especially in these weaker position groups, that's where it's, it's really going to be important. So if I had to bet, I would say... He will be a starter week one. Uh, But if someone pops in training camp, easily he could lose that job. I agree with you. I think he will be the starter on day one. Uh, Does he keep it for the whole year? I'm not entirely sure. But I do think he will be the starter on day one. But to be honest, this competition is going to be up in the air. So it's going to be a fun one to watch as the offseason goes on. And make sure to stay tuned because we'll be discussing more of the linebackers in depth in our full length podcast.